friends of the inner sanctum. This is your host to welcome you through the portals of the squeaking door for another delightfully horrible half hour with a delicious assortment of obnoxious people. Friends, I've just come from a formal dinner that was given by the Society for the Prevention of People to raise money to buy a blood bank for toothless vampires. All the gay ghouls in town were there. As the first course, they said, an ectoplasm salad with astral dressing. Mm. Mm. But the best part of the evening was the entertainment. They had a ballet of dancing skeletons doing a rumba to the beat of their own bones. It made everybody grin from ear to ear. Wouldn't you have liked to have been there? <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, The Magic Tile, was written by Milton Lewis and stars Mercedes McCambridge in the role of Catherine with Everett Sloan as Mark. All right, friends. Let's get dreadful. Now, remember, don't scream back at the radio. It won't do you any good. All set. Then listen as we hear Catherine Bryan tell us this story in her own words. Flash of lightning, like a giant white electric light, lit up the sky that night as I went up the walk. And Brian Mansion looked like a huge gabled tomb standing there on the hill, its towers, two huge skeleton arms, stretching up into the black, sullen sky. For the moment I wanted to run, to run as far and as fast as I could from this house where I was born. And I wish now that I had. As much as I hated it, I had come back. Not because I lived there, not because I wanted to be there, but because in this house I should find out if I was going to live or if I was going to die. I let myself in quietly and made my way to the living room. Then there was a rustling of skirts and my mother suddenly appeared in the dim, shadowy light. Kathy, Kathy, dear. Hello, Mother. You're so late, I was becoming worried. Oh? Was my stepfather worried, too? Why, yes, dear. Mark is still up. Here, you've got to take your coat off. It's so through. No, don't you touch me. Kathy, darling. And don't start sniveling over me again, Mother. I can't stand it. I was just trying to help you. Yes, you're always trying to help me, aren't you? Why didn't you think of helping me before you married that man upstairs? (laughs) No. You're such a pretty woman, Mother. You couldn't possibly be without a husband. What would people say? Catherine, please, you can't go on like this. No, I can't. I can't go on very much longer without destroying myself. You mustn't say such things. And why not? It would make you and Mark very happy if I should die, wouldn't it, Catherine? Nobody in this house wants me to go on living. Good evening, Catherine. Mark. I didn't know you were here. I'm aware of that. I heard you. Mark, she didn't mean it. She didn't mean a word of it. Oh, but I did. And now that you're both here, there's something that I've got to find out tonight. It's very important. What is it? Ten years ago, my father died. Catherine, we can't discuss that now. We've got to. I've got to know certain things. Why? Because if I don't, something dreadful might happen to me. Now, Catherine, you're exaggerating. Dr. Wells doesn't think so. I've been going to him for months now. And he knows that there's grave danger that I'll go completely out of my mind if I don't find out about this, my poor No, don't pity me, Mother. Help me. Tell me how my father died. You know. You were there. Catherine, don't try to put me off. You've lied to me about my father's death ever since I was a child. Catherine, there's nothing to tell. Your father was killed in an accident. He he was a doctor. That'll be enough, Laura. What more? We'll call Dr. Wells the first thing in the morning and discuss this matter with him. Why don't you let her tell me? What have you got to hide? We're not going to discuss this until I speak to Dr. Wells. Lola, I suggest you come upstairs as soon as possible. Good night, Catherine. Mother? He's gone. You were going to tell me. Where was this accident, Mother? How did it happen? Who was involved? Kathy, you're in no state to hear anything right now. Mark was right. 
We should speak to Dr. Wells about it first. Yes, speak to him. So that you can both make up an appropriate lie to tell me. Well, I don't want any lies. I want the truth about it, Mother. And I'm prepared to go to any length to get it. Look at this, Mother. No, Cass. Look at it. What is it? A woman told this to me today. A strange little woman. It's, it's a sort of tiny painted tile. It's not just an ordinary tile, Mother. It comes from the Orient, the woman said. Can you see this odd design? Well, if you look at it long enough, a strange thing will happen. You'll find yourself able to talk to the dead, to see them wherever they are, and to touch them. Catherine. And I'm going to talk to my father. You can't be serious. If you won't tell me what I want to know, then the dead will. My mother left the room. And I sat down in front of the fireplace as I used to when I was a child. I looked at the tile, at the design, and parallel lines and dots seemed to dance before my eyes. I stared at it. It seemed to hold me, to control my gaze. And then almost at once I felt an icy chill in the air, and the design vanished. In its place there was black, infinite space filled with shadows, and still shadows beyond shadows. And then I noticed a speck of gray come out of the blackness, with a strange, sulfurous odor, and it came toward me. At first very slowly, and gradually faster and faster as though it were coming to me through endless years of space. Suddenly there was an ear-shattering thunderclap, a streak of lightning zigzagged through the room in an insane dance, and then I heard the front door close. I heard footsteps approaching. I turned around, faced the doorway, and then I saw him. You. You're Kathy. Kathy Brine. You know me? I did. Ten years ago. How strange this house has become. As though deep in the heart of it, something started to rot and decay. It was not like this when I saw it last. Where? Where did you come from? Did... Tell me, how do I appear to you? How you appear? Yes, please. You have white hair and white beard. But your eyes... Don't know it can't be. What can't be? That my eyes are the eyes of a corpse? That I look more like a dead man than a living one? Yes. That should not be so strange. Oh. Who are you? Where did you come from? Where is your mother? Upstairs. In her room. And her husband, I heard she's remarried. He's upstairs, too. Did you know my father? Dr. Bryan? Very well. Very well, indeed. How did he die? I want to know that. He was murdered. Murdered? Yes, murdered. How do you know? I saw it all. You saw it? I was punished for it. You murdered him? No, no, no. I did not kill him. He was the only friend I had in the world. That's why I came back here tonight, you see. Didn't you ever know how your father died? No. Would you like to know? Yes, yes, more than anything in the world. He was the kindest of men. And that's what led to his destruction. He took a man under his care, a man who'd been given up as a raving maniac. And rather than see this man placed in an institution, he kept him in the guest cottage of his house. Sweet. I remember now, that man was a poet. Yes. His name was Dennis Damore. Your father believed this man was a great poet and struggled to save him. Did this man murder my father? No. 
One evening, when your father came in to treat Damore, there was a third man in the darkened cottage. This man leaped at your father and drove a knife into his back. The poor madman, frightened, ran over the countryside until he was caught by the police. And he was charged with the murder of your father. You said that you saw all of this. I did. Then you, you're the... This madman, Dennis Damore. You're dead? Perhaps I am. Oh. And the murderer. Who was the person who murdered my father? You know him quite well. He's the man who's now married to your mother, Mark Weldon. I... Can you prove this? Your father is the only one who can prove this. My father? Can you bring my father back here? Bring him back? You came back? If you could only bring him and prove this? Prove it? Perhaps I can. Perhaps I will bring him back tonight. Just then there was a tremendous thunderclap and the electric light failed. I tried to see him by the firelight, but he wasn't in the room. I ran to the door, stumbling over furniture in the darkness and screaming for him to wait. I opened the front door, but he wasn't there. And when I came back into the living room, my mother was there, and with her was Mark Weldon. Chelsea, we heard you screaming. Did you, Mother? What happened? I... I found out how my father died. Really? How? He was murdered. Did you tell her anything? No, not a word, Mark, I swear. Chelsea, how did you find out? I told you how I'd find out. That... That tile? Yes, that tile, Mother, it worked. That's impossible. Of course you'd say that. But I discovered tonight that you, Mark, you murdered my father. You cleverly arranged that a poor patient of his named Dennis Damore would be arrested for the crime that you committed. Who told you this? Dennis Damore. Damore? Was he here? Yes. And he told me everything. And you believed him? Why shouldn't I? Why, the man's a maniac. I don't know how he ever got here. He should be at the state institution for the criminally insane. Number three. Hello, operator. Will you put through a call to the State Institution for the Criminally Insane at Blyton? I wish to speak to whomever is in charge. And call me back as soon as you get them. It's urgent. Yes, sir. I understand. Thank you. Catherine, you actually claim you spoke to this man? Yes, Mark. And he told me that he saw you murder my father. You're lucky you escaped with your life. The man's a homicidal maniac. I, I find it shocking that you should even begin to believe this fantastic story. But it seems to be true, Mark, doesn't it? My father was murdered, and Dennis Tamor was sent away for the crime. Yes, that part of it is true, but do accuse me. He not only accuses you, Mark, but he's going to prove it. How? By bringing my father back here. Laura, we've tolerated her in this house for... Hello. Hello, uh, this is Dr. King, night supervisor of State Institution. Oh, hello, this is Mark Weldon speaking. Uh, has one of your patients, Dennis Tamor, escaped... That's right, a homicidal maniac. Well, he hasn't escaped, Mr. Weldon. He was one of the patients who was killed in a fire that broke out in this place two years ago. What's that? Well, didn't you hear me? Yes. Yes, I heard you. Thank you. Goodbye. Mark, what is it? Dennis Damore is dead. He was killed two years ago. Well, friends, how'd you like to have a little tiny pile that can produce dead men for you? Hmm? Or don't you think that Dennis Demore is a ghost? Maybe you think he's just an old pop-eyed folder guy. <laughs> well, we'll know in a moment. As we hear Captain Bryan tell us the second half of her weird story. My stepfather's hand trembled as he hung up the phone. Even in the red glow of the firelight, I could see that his face had suddenly turned snow white. My mother said nothing. 
but she stared at him as he went to the desk and lit one of the kerosene lamps which we use when the electricity fails at Brian Mansion. It's impossible. The dead can't come back. Unless you're making up this whole thing, Kathy. Why should I invent a story like this? Because you've always been insanely jealous. You've always hated your mother for marrying me. Isn't that true, Laura? Isn't it? Yes, it's true. There. You see, Catherine? Your mother loves you. She wouldn't lie. Now, tell us the truth. You made up this whole wild tale about Dennis Samoa, didn't you? No, Mark, I didn't invent it. Dennis Samoa was here. He couldn't have been. He's been dead for two years. Then how would I know the things I told you? I don't know. That's what you've got to explain. Mark! Why does this upset you so? If you didn't murder my father, what difference does it make about your more? Why are you so frightened? I'm not frightened. I'm just determined to get to the bottom of the What was that? Just the thunder, Mark. Laura, why are you looking at me like that? Like, like what? Staring at me. As though you've just seen me for the first time. Do you believe this mad story, Captain Soldus? Do you think I murdered her father? I just remembered certain things, Mark. I can't help it if I think of them now. What things? Tell me what things. Two days before the murder, you told me you were in love with me. I sent you away. I told you never to come to this house again. Yes, go on. On the night of the murder, I saw you standing in the moonlight near the guest cottage. You did? I thought I was mistaken. Especially since you claimed you were at home that night. Mark, now don't be angry with me. I can't help thinking of these things now. It's only natural. Natural? Is it natural for a man's wife to accuse him of a crime like murder? And on the basis of what? The word of a psychopathic girl who should have been confined long ago. She talked to a man who's been dead for two years. I suppose you believe that too. And who is this man, even assuming that he is alive? A madman, a homicidal maniac who took your first husband's life when your husband tried to kill him. Well, I've had enough of this. Mark, what are you taking out of that drawer? Kathy, come here. Why? Mark, put that gun away. Shut up, Laura. Kathy, I won't hurt you unless you try something dangerous. I'm holding this gun because I believe your mother and I are no longer safe in the same room with you. Now, I want the truth. You were lying to us before, weren't you? No. Very well, then. Who is this man you saw? I'd like to see him, too. I don't know. Of course you don't, because he doesn't exist. He does. He appeared when I looked at the Chinese style. The Chinese style? Good, good. Look at the Chinese style now. Make him appear. No, you're trying to make a fool of me, a liar. You do as I tell you. Look at that tile. Go on. All right. I will. Now, what do you see? Nothing. But the design. Yes, and that's all you're going to see. No, no. No. The design is fading. It's getting dark. Dark. Nothing but blackness. Mark! I heard the front door. Someone just came in. Yes. The footsteps. That's just how he came in the last time. Perhaps, but I doubt it. It is. Oh, it is. No more. Do you remember me, Laura? Yes. You've changed a great deal, but it is you. Mr. Weldon, it's been ten years since I've seen you. Yeah, more. Then you're not dead. There must have been some mistake when I identified you. Not dead. You escaped. Someone must have been identified instead of you. That's the only explanation. It depends on what you choose to believe, Mr. Weldon. I brought a guest with me. My father. Brian. I'm sure you know these people quite well. Of course you do. What's he saying? He's talking to my father. That's right, Kathy. Unfortunately, you cannot see him. But he is here. Aren't you, Doctor? Stemmer, what are you up to? What do you think? If you come back here to make trouble... Trouble? No. I've come back because someone wanted to know the truth. And I brought the doctor back for the same reason. Doctor... 
Before these others, I want you to tell us who murdered you. Who murdered you? Look! You shot him! Yes. Why? Why? He's dangerous. A maniac. That's not the reason. It's because you murdered my father and you didn't want us to know. All right, Kathy. I did kill him. Mark! Doesn't make any difference now. This maniac has planted the suspicion in your minds. You would have found out sooner or later. Ma. Yes, I killed him. For you, Laura. I love you. That's over now. It's been over for a long time. I know what to do now, and it's going to be very simple, thanks to our friend lying there. What are you going to do? Don't you know, Laura? It's so simple. Your bodies must be found in such a condition that they will be certain Damon killed you. Then I'll tell them how I shot the homicidal maniac to protect myself. The same way he killed my father? Yes, Kathy. You won't die, Kathy. Hey, come on. If you think you could kill me, well, then... Damon! Do you think those shots will stop me? No, no. Don't you come near me. Stand back! Nothing will stop me, well, then... The, the, the gun! It's empty! I saw the bullet strike him, or they hit him, but they didn't stop him from lurching toward Mark and seizing him by the throat. As they fell to the floor, the kerosene lamp fell off the table. It might have been the wind, but I believe otherwise. I'm almost certain it was my father. And then in a moment, the drapes were on fire, and the whole place was blazing. I screamed to my mother to leave, and she ran with me out of the blazing building, out into the storm that raged outside. Two weeks later, my mother came into the hotel room where we were staying. I have just come from the police, Kathy. Well, Mother? Only one body is positively identified. Who's? Mark. The other body? They haven't been able to find it amongst the rubble. I don't believe they ever will. But, Kathy, the police checked with the authorities at the state institution. It seems that some of the patients did escape at the time they had the fire there two years ago. It's possible that Demore was among them. It's possible. But I doubt it. You think Demore died two years ago? Yes, Mother. Don't you? A short time later, the police found something in the ruins of the building that had once been a human being. They assumed it was the remains of Dennis Damour. Identification was impossible. However, these remains freed us of all suspicion. And now we are living in the city, a long way from Brian Mansion, where I know that the dead come back to settle their debt with a murderer. <laughs> well, friends, I guess you've met ghosts before, but... I'm sure this is the first time you've ever met a crazy spook. Or don't you think Dennis Damore was a ghost? Well, you know, there's only one way to find out if ghosts really exist. Just ask one to haunt you sometime. <laughs> and that, of course, brings us to the moral of this story, which is taken from the gibberings of graveyards. The wise old lunatic who said, If you wake up screaming in the middle of the night... Close the window. Don't bother the neighbors. <laughs>